Okay, in this video we're going to see some group data. What happens here is that if, for example, you ask some people how tall are you, and you get these results, you see that people have very common numbers, very uh, similar numbers in, in heights. Let's say some people were around 150, some people were around 160 something. So to understand this data better, what you can do is to create intervals and group the numbers into intervals. Put the numbers together, those numbers that you consider similar. In, in an exercise, the, the size of the interval will, give, will be given. Obviously, you are going to work with estimations not the real data, but if you have a large, large amount of data, let's say 100, 200 results, this will help you to make things a lot easier. So, imagine that we create a table like this. Look, we say, all the red ones are between 150 and 160. Look, all numbers between that are red here are between 150 and 160, 1.5, 1.6 meters, and this is uh, four results. That's why in the frequency we put four, meaning that we have four results inside this interval. Then between 160 and 170 we have 1.61 1 and 1.62 meters. So there we put a two, a number two there. Notice that even though we have a 1.70, we don't put it in this interval, we put it in the next one because this symbol means that is up to 170 but not including 170. So 170 comes in this next interval. That is why if you count the blue numbers that are between 170 and 180, you have four numbers there on the frequency because you have one, two, three, four numbers that are between 170 and 180, including the 170. And then from 180 to 190, you have another one, two, three, four, five numbers, so that's why in the frequency we put four. And now we're going to work, instead of working with all the data values, we're going to work with this table to, to get the mean, the median, the mode, and the range. Notice also that if you want to know how many people was interviewed, how many people was asked, you don't have to count the numbers. You just have to add the frequencies, like four plus two plus four plus five. This is 15, so 15 people were asked this question. 4 plus 2 plus 4 plus 5, 15 people. So now, how do we find the modal class? What we call the mode now becomes the modal class. And it is the same thing, the most repeated interval now. So we think about the interval that has more frequency. And which is the interval that has more frequency? This last interval here contains five numbers. These four, these two, these four. So this, that has more frequency because it has five, is the interval that contains the mode. This we call it modal class or modal interval. Here now, we don't really care which are the real values. We don't really care about that. We just care about knowing that this is an interval that has more numbers inside. So that is the modal class or the modal interval. So you answer that the modal interval or the interval that contains the mode or the modal class is the interval between 180 and 190. So you write this down and that's it. Then, what about the median? Again, the median, we have 15 results, as we say, okay? So if we do the quick rule, 15 plus 1 divided by 2, we get 8. So this means that the 8th place, the 8th place is the one that contains the median. So, look, if you have 4 plus 2 is equal to 6. So this, this is place 1 to 4, this is place 5 and place 6, and this is place 7, place 8, place 9 and place 10, so here is place 8, that is the one that we are looking for, so this is the interval that contains the median, because we have 4 plus 2 is 6, and we are looking for place 8, so place 8 should be here on this interval, because here we go from 6 to 10, so place 8 is here. So the interval that contains the median is the interval between 170 and 180, 1.70 and 1.80, okay? Now what about the mean? For the mean, we are going to again use the table and we have some steps. First, we have to find the middle number of each interval. That means we are going to get an estimation of the mean, not really the mean because now we don't care about which the numbers are, so we are not working with the original values. We are going to work with a, a, like a representation of this range, so we find the middle number. Which is the middle number between 1.5 and 1.6? 1 1.55. 
which is the middle number between 1.6 and 1.70? 1.65, which is the middle number between 1.70 and 1.8? 1.75, and the middle number between 1.8 and 1.90 is 1.85. So now we work with these red values here, and we work out the same as if we have a table, a normal table. So the second step is to multiply by the frequency. We will multiply 1.55 times 4, 1.65 times 2, 1.75 times 4, 1.85 times 5. So we do that, and we get all these values. 1.55 times the frequency of that, 1.65 times the frequency of that, 1.75 times the frequency, and 1.85 times the frequency. We get these values. So then you have to add those values down, like 6.3 plus 3.3 plus 7 plus 9.25, and you get this beautiful 25.75 here. And then the last step is to divide by the sum of the frequency, by 15, that was the number of people that was interviewed, how many data values you have. You sum the frequencies. So there you do 4 plus 2 plus 4 plus 5, that is 15. So then you divide by 15, so you get 25.75 divided by 15, that is 1.72 if you round it up to two decimal places. So this is our estimation for the mean. It's not the real mean, but it's an estimation, a good estimation for the mean. And obviously the last step to calculate the range, you just do the biggest minus the smallest. So you do 190 minus 150. So this is the biggest possible value minus the smallest possible value. So you get a range of 0 0.4, which is quite fair enough. Okay, that's all. That's all for this. See you.